everyone, and Happy New Year. So a uh, hummingbird update here. I've uh, been busy over the holiday break, which was really, really good. Uh, as some of you know, we went down to Florida and picked up the Thunderbolt engine. We're gonna talk about that in a bit. But since then, uh, the weather was cooperative. Uh, we were able to get the cabin in and out of the paint booth and get uh, the red, silver, and black on it. So that was pretty exciting. Having to wait three days between each of those so they would cure and allow for tape. So it came out all right. If you look a little higher, you can see today, pieces parts are going on. So got the pylon on, uh, the star, and the uh, rotor hub, main hub. So that was exciting to get on. My A-frame here came in really handy again. So we had about, I don't know, five inches of clearance at the ceiling. We actually, there's no way we could lift that up by hand. It's a couple of hundred pounds anyway. So that's on. I just need a tool now to tighten up the Jesus nut, the 250 to 300 inch pound. So I'll work on that. In the meantime, we're going to get ready to hang the engine here, this beautiful Thunderbolt engine that you may have seen in the crate on the last video. And Carol said, oh, before you hang it, you've got to do some splaining. So we're going to do some splaining here. And basically some of the questions are, what's different about a helicopter engine? So those are good questions. Basically, this is an IO 540, but it's an HIO 540. It's a Thunderbolt, so it's experimental. It's got the Y ahead of that, so it's a YHIO 540. And this engine is going to sit not level like it is here in the hoist, but if you look at the engine mount here, it's almost at a 45 degree angle. So what typically is the propeller shaft is going to connect right here to the main transmission. So. That being said, guess what doesn't work real well? The oil tank. So the oil, this engine is gonna be seated at an angle, back like this. So you'll look here on the cylinders, they have drain back tubes on them. Normally, you'll see drain back tubes from these cylinders right underneath uh, the crankcase there on, on the engines that most of you are used to using in your airplane. That doesn't work. With this tipped at an angle, what we want is all this oil to drain here and then back to the sump. So you'll see down here, it's basically an aerobatic setup. And I'll come around that side and point out some things here. If you look down here, we'll get this harness out of the way. So where your propeller governor would go, we're going to actually collect oil here uh, back to the oil tank. The oil tank will be remote mounted. It's a dry sump. And then here where your oil filter screen is, uh, got an adapter coming from Lycoming. This will come off, adapter will go in there and will feed oil there to the oil pump. So we plug it internally there, just like a uh, aerobatic engine. And we'll be using this fitting too to get more oil to and from the oil tank from the sump. So again, this sits at an angle like this. You can see coming up, we've got one magneto. And on this side, we're gonna end up with a Surefly. Uh, basically like homies electronic ignition so that was a little bit on back order should be coming here soon one of the things I believe in and I know many of you are aware from some of my columns is a standby alternator so I've already put that on I like putting on what I can put on prior to actually mounting the engine so I'm not laying on my belly trying to do it we've got the oil pressure pickup right here now this is a restrictor fitting in there and you wanna make certain you do that for fuel, manifold pressure and uh, oil pressure. Basically it's a, a restrictor in there, it's about a 60 thousandths hole. Really we're just measuring pressure so we don't care about flow. But if your line were to break with the 60 thousandths hole, we're not gonna get much leakage out of there before you have a catastrophic engine failure. So you can see down here the engine mounts have been mounted. These are the bottom lower engine mounts. We're not using the typical top ones here that you'd see on a dynafocal mount. Again, since this one sits at an angle, if you come around to the front here, you can see the forward engine mounts are right there. And there's one on this side as well. Okay. And if you look right above this forward engine mount is the engine breather line. Again, we can't use the typical breather line back here because of the way this sits, the accessory case will be pretty much full of oil. So uh, that one is plugged and we're gonna pick up a breather now on the front, where normally a front mounted governor pad would be on an IO540. So you can see it's an injected engine. Uh, the ADs are taken care of, meaning every six inches minimum, all the injector lines are properly secured to the engine so they don't vibrate and break. 
This is a cold air induction system. It's gonna have a real nice, it's a, uh, hold on, I'll grab this over here. This is, uh, this is from uh, Airflow Performance. I love their setups. So this will go on right like here. Got it all set to go once we get this thing in the engine mount. And then we'll run a tube up here to an air intake. Alternator is here. We're gonna put a B and C on this. Uh, and we'll put that on after we get it mounted, of course. But if you look at the cold air induction system down here, one of the other things we'll point out in the back is normally on the bottom here, you can see these two boss fittings. You'd put a snorkel fitting in there. Basically what that does is when, when you shut down an injected engine, you will get some fuel leakage from the cylinders, from the spider up on top of the engine. You want to drain that out of the intake system. So if you come around here, I'll show you on the backside what I've done on this engine, since we're gonna be back at that 35 to 40 degree angle, was I drilled and tapped the sump here and we've got our snorkel fitting here. So that'll be pretty much straight down and drain this sump real well then when it's installed. So I think that's about it. Hopefully, uh, you know, my intent was to get this installed today, but uh, uh, you know, I always have bigger ambitions than what I can get done. Probably gonna be off the, out of commission here for a little bit, gallbladder surgery scheduled for in the morning. So hopefully that'll go well and we'll see you back soon. Again, happy new year to everybody.